Hey, hey, welcome back to another video on the Agape Investing channel where I help you learn biblical and practical money tips so you can start living abundantly, giving generously, and radically advancing the kingdom of God without any kind of financial hesitation. I'm Katie Jones, and in this video, you are going to learn how to set up a monthly budget using Google Sheets. In last week's video, you learned all about the importance as well as the five-step process to setting up and using a value-based budget. If you haven't already watched that video, you can check it out using the link above or the link in the show notes below. And while I highly recommend that you do check out that video, it's definitely not necessary to watch it in order to go through and set up your monthly budget using this process today. Today in this training, we're going to zoom in on step number four of the value-based budgeting process, which is all about how to actually set up your budget or your money plan for the month. Now, to keep track of your budget, you really can do this using pen and paper, or you can use something like Excel spreadsheets, but I personally love using Google Sheets for three main reasons. One, Google offers a lot of free templates to help you get started tracking pretty much everything. Two, you can easily share your Google Sheets with other people. So if you're creating a household budget, you can invite your spouse or family members to join in and edit the budget with you. And reason number three is that all of the documents and sheets that are in Google are cloud-based, which means that you can access them anywhere. All you need to do is jump on the internet. You can also grab the sheets app so that way you can keep your budget in your pocket. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a budget using Google Sheets. And the first thing I wanna show you is exactly how you can access the free templates that I mentioned just before. There are two ways that you can access Google's spreadsheet templates. The first way is by going to docs.google.com forward slash spreadsheets. That will bring you here to this page. When you get here, just click on template gallery, and then you can scroll down and find they have both an annual budget as well as a monthly budget. The other way is by going to your Google Drive at drive.google.com and clicking on new, and then coming to spreadsheets, hovering over this arrow, and then saying from a template, that will bring you to the same page showing you all of the different templates that they have, and then you can find the annual budget and monthly budget. So this is Google's monthly budget. It's pretty basic. This is basically just the summary sheet, and then you can type in all of your transactions here on this page, and everything auto-populates throughout the spreadsheet here. The annual budget works very similarly where you uh, put in your starting balance, and then you can input all of your expenses and incomes into place. They then have a pretty robust summary page that will auto-populate and give you all of your summaries throughout the year. Both of these templates are really great for getting started with budgeting, and I highly recommend using both an annual as well as a monthly budget to kind of get a full picture of how you're using your money throughout the year. So for me personally, I wanted to create a budget where I didn't have to be jumping back and forth between two different spreadsheets. So I came up with my own budget spreadsheet template in order to combine both of these together to work seamlessly. You can follow along with this tutorial video using the free Google spreadsheet templates that I just showed you, or if you'd like to follow along using my personal budget spreadsheets, you can grab them by going to the show notes below. So step number one, no matter which template you are using, is personalizing this template to fit your own incomes and expenses. In my budget spreadsheets, that happens by going to both the expenses tab as well as the income tab and changing out all of these different categories for yourself. The next thing you want to do after personalizing the spreadsheets for yourself and inputting in your own income and expense categories is to put in your income for the month. Now, if you're salary, this will be really easy to determine because it's probably a fixed number every month. But if you're like me and have an irregular income, I'm going to be sharing a video in just a few weeks about how to budget with a fluctuating income. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out when that video comes out. So for the sake of this example, we're just going 
going to say that we are salary and we're going to make it $4,000 for the income. Now the third step is putting in all of your expenses. Many people kind of mess this part up because they try to restrain themselves a little too much when they're creating their budget. So think of this part not as like a tightening down of the belt, but rather setting up a plan, an itinerary for what you want your month to look like. So I recommend starting with all of your fixed expenses first. Things like your rent or mortgage, cell phone bills, debt payments, any monthly subscription, if you're on salary income, it's really easy to figure out how much you are tithing every month. So you can basically add that as a fixed expense. However, if you are on a fluctuating income, that might change month to month. After inputting all of your fixed expenses, I recommend going through and doing all of your discretionary expenses, which is anything that kind of fluctuates throughout the months and isn't regular. And even with that, I recommend starting with all of the necessary expenses, things like food, groceries, gas, home supplies, utilities. These expenses are discretionary because you basically get to decide how much you're spending on them each month. Now, obviously you have to pay for groceries and for food and for gas if you're driving to work. However, it's kind of up to you whether you are driving a lot during the week or whether you're driving a little. And it's also up to you how much you spend on groceries. So if you're eating really healthy, you're probably spending a little bit more to buy things like organic foods. Now, if you're following along with the value-based budgeting process, in step two, we went over how to track your expenses to figure out how much on average you're spending on these discretionary expenses. This should help you understand how much on average you're spending so that you know what numbers to put here into your budget today. So for example, if you've been spending around $800 a month on groceries, you may decide that that's the number you want to put in your budget here today. However, maybe you feel like that's a little bit too much and you want to set a goal of maybe doing $750 or $700 for this month to kind of challenge yourself. When you're doing budgeting right, it really shouldn't be a restrictive process. It really should be more liberating because it helps you to start to reallocate and fine tune your expenses to go towards things that actually matter to you versus spending it all the time on frivolous purchases. So be sure to actually go through and track your expenses. It really will be an eye-opening experience and help you set realistic goals and limits for your budget. Another thing that you should remember as you are planning your monthly budget is to think about all the different events that you have going on throughout the month. So if you have any coffee dates or lunches or birthdays planned on your calendar, be sure to add any expenses that are associated with these events into your budget. Now I've added a few examples to this budget spreadsheet. So the last step in this process is to now go and evaluate are you living within your means? So if you come up to the top of the spreadsheets, if you're using mine, you will see the planned income as well as planned expenses, and then you'll see what your projected savings or losses are. So for this example, you can see that we've gone over our income limit. So if you've gone over, what you want to do is come back down to your plan and see where you can make any reductions or cuts to your discretionary spending. Now that we've made the fix, you can see that we will be projected to be saving around $225 this month. If you are following along with the value-based budgeting process, this is also the step in which I would take out your core values that you wrote down for yourself and examine to see if you are actually spending money towards those things that you determined are your core values. And if you feel like your expenses are going towards things that you don't actually value, be sure to start reallocating. I gave an example of how my husband and I I actually did this years ago in the value-based budgeting video. Now you've set up your monthly budget, I highly recommend coming back and checking it once a week and inputting all of your expenses throughout that week to make sure that you're actually sticking to the plan. All right, there you have it, the four steps to creating your very own monthly budget. And again, if you'd like to use the templates that I was showing in this example, be sure to grab them in the show notes below. If you have any questions, 
questions, please drop them in the comments below because I'd love to get back to you and help you set up your very own monthly budget. If you're struggling to make your income stretch the whole month and you're really kind of having a hard time planning out a whole month ahead, I wanna give you a process that will actually help you to set up a budget week by week. I want you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on the next week's video, which will teach you all about how to set up a weekly budget for yourself. Maybe this isn't the first time that you have tried setting up a budget for yourself and you've really struggled with holding yourself accountable to sticking with the budget you just set up. If that sounds like you, the missing piece probably isn't a new budget, but a new accountability system. And so I'd love to jump on a discovery call with you to see if coaching is the right fit where I can actually help you and coach you and keep you accountable to sticking with the budget that you just set up.